What is going on everybody on YouTube? Steve here, Raking Profit. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to pay your eBay lister. So, you know, a lot of people wanna scale their eBay business. They want to list more items up because they've recognized the more they list, the more money they make. But the problem is we all have 24 hours in the day. So there's really only so much you can do on your own. So I'm gonna talk about my experience with hiring an eBay lister. Uh, currently, I don't have one right now. I've been looking and interviewing people and there's been a couple people that I've, you know, they've passed the interview process and everything, but their schedules are just conflicting with mine. So hopefully soon I will get somebody in house to help me out with that because I could definitely use the help. But I have had experience in the past hiring an eBay lister a, working outside of my place, and I paid them a certain way, and then I had them, when I had an office space, I was paying them a different way. So I'm gonna talk about how to pay an eBay lister, because a lot of people have you know, questions about that. Now, I'm not gonna get into the legalities of having an actual on-the-books employee versus paying under the table. That's something that you can determine, and you can take that risk or do whatever you wanna do, but I'm gonna talk about how to pay your eBay lister. So if you guys are ready to rock and roll in this show, what's up, Bretts? Do me a big favor, guys, and smash that like button because I know this video can help a lot of people out. There's a lot of folks who are struggling to increase their listings on eBay and Amazon, and um, you know they want to hire somebody, but maybe one thing stopping them is they don't know how to go about paying. Should they pay hourly? Should they pay based on uh, an, a per item basis? What should you do? So. Let's wait for everybody to smash that like button and uh, let's dive into it. I'm rocking some, some new shades today, getting ready to go into the library to spend a couple hours uh, working on the new course, Men's Clothing Mastery. So looking forward to getting in there and doing that. But I wanna answer some uh, questions for you guys real quick. So here's the thing, guys. You have primarily two options. And again, we're not talking about if they're an employee or, um, if they're you know under the table or whatnot, that's a whole nother story. But there's two ways that you can pay your employee. You can pay them, or your helper, you can pay them on a per item basis. And I've actually, this is when I first hired um, my first helper, they were actually working outside of their house. And essentially what I did was I brought over a backdrop to their house. I uh, set up a little, um, commercial clothing rack over there. I brought all my clothing over every single week. I'd bring over blazers, sport coats. I'd bring over button fronts. I'd bring over suits, so, uh, shorts, jeans. I'd bring over all different types of clothing items and um, he would list them. He would, well, he would actually at that time, he wouldn't list them, but he would um, measure them. He would fill out a template at that time. This is back before like the eBay app was really good. He would measure them. He would, uh, you know, um, inspect the items, he would photograph the items, he would pretty much do everything, and then I would pick up all the templates and everything, and, um, wanna see my eyes? I'll show you my eyes. And um, I would list them. So, since I wasn't there with him, and I couldn't watch over him, and it was my first time really, you know, uh, working with, with a helper, I decided that the best thing to do was to pay based on a per item basis. And that's how I did it. Um, I can't remember exactly, what I was paying, but I believe for like button front shirts, polo shirts, t-shirts, and shorts, like the quicker to list items, I was paying a dollar. And then if it was a blazer or a sport coat, I think I was paying a dollar fifty. And if it was a suit or something that was just really in depth that took a lot longer to list, I would pay two dollars per item. So that's how I did it. Um, for others, it may be different, but that came out to somewhere between probably ten to fifteen dollars per hour and if he wanted to move a little quicker and really go through it and, and rush through it as long as the quality was there then he could make more money for his time essentially so that worked out for me because that was like on a results basis and I experimented with different prices and whatnot um, I think we did like 50 cents per tie but that was the first way that I'd gotten started paying my helper and um, it worked out it worked out pretty well you know the thing if I could go back in time and if the eBay app was working well you know, I would have either given him a phone or had him use his phone and list the items right there because it was definitely a pain in the butt. Like, it was a lot of work having to always yank all the clothing clothing over and then bring it back. Um, you know, I did set it up with the hanging, um, with the uh, masking tape 
inventory system. So there was a piece of masking tape on every hanger with a letter and a number. So he would uh, put an inventory number on each one. So, and then he would put it on the template and everything. So when I got home, I would store it, but it was a lot of work. It was definitely a lot of work, um, but he wasn't listing. So I didn't give him access to my eBay or anything. Uh, he wasn't listing the items. So that was the first way that you could pay is a base on a, a per item basis. Like I said, button fronts, shorts, any type of t-shirts, basic items. I was paying about a dollar. Anything that was a little more time consuming, like blazer, sport coats, and suits, a dollar fifty to two bucks per item, and that worked. And that didn't include actually listing the item up. So I might have overpaid. I'm not sure, but it definitely worked out. The second way you can pay, and this is going to work better if you trust the person a lot, and or you have like an office space or they come to your house and list. And this is probably, you know, an easier way to pay. It's just an hourly basis. Um, when I had my office space, I had my ex-girlfriend at the time and my, you know, my guy who was um, initially working on a, pay, uh, a per item basis, they were both at my um, office space and I had the first guy, he was taking all the pictures and everything and then I had my ex-girlfriend at the time actually listing all the items up for me and I was paying them on an hourly basis. So how much should you pay an eBay lister? You know, I think minimum wage in a lot of places is like seven to ten dollars an hour so where i live you know i wouldn't pay any um uh less than 10 bucks an hour i think i was paying around 12 dollars per hour which i paid a little more than i probably could have or should have just because it was my ex-girlfriend and it was a friend of mine so um that's how i did it right there it worked out it was a lot less work the thing is when you're paying hourly you've got to stay on top of them because there were times where like I would catch them like on their cell phone or screwing around or just kind of taking it easy and you had to you had to stay on your game so that's definitely something to uh, consider right there but yeah you can pay based on a per item basis or hourly if I could do things all over again I'm gonna do it hourly you know I don't want to have to drop clothing items off or have them come pick it up it's just a lot of extra work and hassle and if it sells you know you got to pick it up and there's just all these different logistics to it so if you are lucky enough to have your own place and you have a workspace for an employee or a helper or an under the table person whatever you decide to do I would go that route and pay hourly that's just what worked out best for me so uh, yeah we got 110 people in the house what's up DJ good to see you that's why per item seems better, no screwing around. Yeah, it's definitely results, you know, result or oriented, but you have to, you know, you have to make sure they're not rushing because that's that was one of the problems too is sometimes they, they would rush and I would find like issues and problems because they were just focused on the money. And then on the other side of the coin, if it's hourly, sometimes they take their sweet ass time. So, um, you know, there's, there's challenges with both ways, but I would try out both. Oh my God, I had horrific problems with employee addicted to their smartphones. I'm telling you, we're all addicted. I'm on my smartphone right now live. I should be working, guys. What are you doing? Hey, good morning. Good to see you, Steph. Thanks for watching live. I appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed these tips, do me a big favor, guys, and smash that like button. You know the deal. I'm going to put my glasses back on because why not, you know? Um, sorry, I was, I was reading a text. Appreciate that, Terry. Thank you. You're awesome, too. Uh, someone's asking about Green Room University, which is actually a membership site that I run with the Bonafide Hustler and the College Picker. And that's been up for over four years. We have about 900 uh, members right now. So uh, things are going well over there. And we just posted a few private shows in there. One about records, another one about... Um, what was it about getting out of debt so we're always doing like things over there special for the green room so definitely check that out yeah the scrolling chat is definitely a pretty cool feature I wish that YouTube live on the mobile device came out years ago I probably would have had 4,000 videos up yeah you know negative feedback happens sometimes guys you know I had gotten negative feedback the other day and I I had picked up a Mont Blanc I think that's how you pronounce it set of two pens and everything looked authentic there was a certificate of well i don't know if it was a certificate of authenticity but it was like a uh insert like everything looked good there was like a bunch of pieces in it and everything looked good and i shipped it off through the global shipping program sold it for 200 dollars, and um 
they said it was counterfeit. They said it was fake. And there's no way that I could prove that it wasn't. But, it, I mean, everything was there. It looked legit. The case looked legit. You know, I had found similar ones. So, you know, what am I supposed to do? They left me a negative feedback. And, uh, you know, I, I accepted the return. It's on the way back. I have a feeling this person was just super sketchy the way I talked to them. They were just, they were just saying really, really weird things. So, I got a negative on that. And, um... I don't know what to do about that. There's nothing to really do. Sometimes you just get a negative. I can't, I don't want to call eBay and be like, hey, you know, can you remove this? They said it was counterfeit. I don't want to, I don't want to bring that to their attention. Um, but it happens sometimes, you know, just, just replace it with positive feedback. Focus, focus on what you can do in the future and try not to make any, um, any mistakes. I don't want to call them because I don't want to bring any type of counterfeit negatives, uh, to the table, whether I'm right or wrong. And, and that's the tough thing sometimes. Sometimes you sell something and you're just not sure if it's authentic. And you could post in the Facebook groups and you can ask your friends um, this and that. But at the end of the day, most people are just taking their best guess and uh, you know, try to avoid that situation in the future. Yeah, you know, some people just can't be pleased, you know. I mean, if, if the if the pen was fake, I mean, I don't blame him, but the guy just left an instant negative. He didn't even, like, contact me. And, you know, on this one account that I have, I have over 2,000 feedback. So I'm obviously not waiting, you know, four years to pull $200 over somebody's head and just leave the country. I mean, some people are just, uh, you know, a little inconsiderate, but it's it's the way the game is played, right? You know, they're there to you know buy items and if you don't get if they don't get what they want they're gonna you know chop your head off <laughs> um what are you gonna do so you know just focus on the future focus on listing more focus on you know try not to make the same mistake in the future do you guys ever have bad ebay dreams i haven't had one in a while yeah you know i mean you just got to do the best you can to keep things professional and try to solve the problem and, and take care of them the best you can because really at the end of the day, guys, we are selling on these third-party platforms and if you do get consistent enough negative feedback and your metrics drop, you could get suspended. You you could get kicked off, you know? What's the alternative? Do what I'm doing and, you know, try to build your own e-commerce Shopify store. But I tell you right now, it's a lot easier to sell on eBay. It's a lot easier to sell on Amazon FBA. Uh, you know, the benefits to building your own e-commerce store heavily outweigh selling on eBay and Amazon, but it's like climbing Mount Everest to get your Shopify store going versus eBay and Amazon. You just, you know, you just jump right in the game and you've got millions and billions of visitors coming to the site every day. You know, with my Shopify store, I'm, you know, paying, paying for traffic. I've got to optimize my site. I've got to deal with the cart, the checkout, customer service. You know, there's so many various things. So... You know, it's just part of the game. We've got to take care of the customers at the end of the day. The sales tax for Shopify is crazy. I'm not sure what you mean by that. What do you mean by the sales tax is, is crazy for Shopify? The state tax? Well, if you're selling on eBay and Amazon, you should already be collecting sales tax for in-state uh, transactions. And it's pretty easy to set it up. You just need to, you know, make sure you have... Um, a sales tax number and then you just insert it in in the back end of eBay or Amazon and then they'll collect sales tax uh, for you so then at the end of the year you don't have to pay sales tax essentially for them right so state tax oh, okay so yeah I think that's about it guys if you have any more questions ask away I'll be on for another minute or two um, if there's any challenges or any issues that you're dealing with I'm happy to help you guys out Uh, do you use a prep company and can you recommend any? I actually don't use a prep company because I'm not really heavily into retail arbitrage. A lot of the prep companies, from my understanding, um, deal with like only brand new items. So there is a prep company that I know is very pro popular. I think it's uh, Prep One Zero, Prep Zero, Zero Prep. What is it called? Somebody help me out. But I know Chris Green, uh, I don't know if he teamed up with them or I know he promotes them prime zero prep I think that's it prime zero prep and I believe they're in a um, sales tax free state yeah prime zero prep which means if you are doing like online arbitrage and you get your items sent to their uh, prep center which I think is in is it New Hampshire you don't get charged that additional sales tax right so if I was to purchase 
from an online source and had it shipped to me in Connecticut, I'd be paying 6.35% on $100. That's an extra $6. On $1,000, that's what? $1,000, what is that? Um, six times 10, so that's like 60, 60 something bucks, bucks. I had a brain fart right there, but you know, it adds up. So if you can have your item shipped to a prep center, Prime Zero Prep in a, in a sales tax free uh, state, you can save some money there too. You could essentially pay for in a way you could pay for your items to get prepped without having any additional costs. I believe it's like a dollar extra to um, you know, to prep your items and everything and, and ship it off to Amazon, which isn't bad at all. So maybe in the future I'll try it out, but I'm really a little hesitant to go too deep into retail arbitrage anymore with all the changes going on. Congratulations, you are now at 60K. Did I hit it? I know yesterday I was at 59 something. Someone's asking if there's any other like ways to pack and pick your your clothing. I'm guess you're I'm guessing you're trying to scale and maybe outsource. You know, there is the option of sending your items, your eBay items to uh, a fulfillment center such as Amazon through multi-channel fulfilling, which essentially means the same thing that you do with Amazon FBA when you send it to the warehouse and they fulfill it. You can actually use multi-channel fulfillment services through Amazon. You could send all your items into their warehouse and then they would ship it when it sells. I don't know exactly how it works. There's gotta be some type of back-end integration. Um, and I know recently they made the change that all boxes are gonna be Amazon branded, so that may or may not affect you. If you had an e-commerce store, that would definitely affect you if you had your own brand. But I don't think it's a big deal on eBay, so definitely check that out as well. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. It's been quite the journey hitting 60,000 subscribers, and uh, you know the channel's definitely growing quick, so it's pretty cool. What's your opinion on the Facebook Marketplace? I think there's a lot of people doing very well with it. You know, if you've got the time to, you know, negotiate with people on Facebook and meet up with them locally. Um, you can make some really good money. The problem is it's not a super scalable model, which is kind of what I've been going towards lately. You know, I still do eBay and clothing and video games and different things like that because I just really, really enjoy it. Um, but it's not a very scalable model, you know, compared to like Merch by Amazon or Amazon FBA or um, having your own e-commerce store or even creating your own products and stuff like that. But I, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a great option for sure. Hey, what's up, money? 4228 in the house. Good to see ya. So, uh, yeah, let me ask you guys a question. Do you have any advice for me um, moving forward with my YouTube channel? I, I'd be curious to know what you guys would like to see. If you guys have noticed lately, I've been kind of talking about a lot of different topics. You know, I've been talking about eBay, Amazon, Merch by Amazon, Shopify store, my own course. I'm really trying to switch things up, but I'd be curious if you guys had, a, had any advice. We got Chris in the house right now from The Green Room, one of my partners in, in The Green Room University. And that just reminds me, guys, if you are interested in The Green Room, get our free book, greenroomuniversity.com forward slash 100 book. It should be the first link in the description down below. So you can definitely check that out and get 100 amazing items to resell on eBay and Amazon. Go grab that right now. So, uh... Breach Shop says, can you do more uh, sold listing stuff to stay current? Definitely. I actually really enjoy making that content. And to be honest, I enjoy it because it's it's like killing like eight stone killing eight birds with one stone. Um, you know, when I'm doing the sold listings, I'm growing my YouTube channel, I'm connecting, I'm networking with you guys, I'm learning, I'm putting money in my pocket. So I love doing that. So uh, Terry Stone says I will be joining the Green Room University on June 1st for sure. Uh-oh, Terry. About to join the tribe, <laughs> join the cult. I'm just kidding. Uh, good to see you, Natalie um, or Natalia. Build a good routine, being positive. It's all about being positive and optimistic. How do you track your purchases that you don't get receipt for tax cost cost of goods sold? So I think what you're asking is, I don't understand the question. 100% but you're not supposed to a lot of people think that when you buy like say for example say you go to the thrift store and you spend like $150 on you know uh, items right a lot of people will just write all of that off 150 bucks okay 
I, I spent it, it's an expense, it's 100% write off. It's called cost of goods sold in bookkeeping terms because it's the cost of goods that you sold. You cannot write off what you purchase to resell technically until the items sell, cost of goods sold. So I think what you're asking is, how do you track you know, what, um, what actually sold and what hasn't sold? And to be honest, it's, it's, it's a challenge with eBay. And you know, if you guys hit me up behind the scenes, I could kind of tell you what I do for eBay. I don't really want to put that out there right now just because, for, for many reasons, but for Amazon, just because it's complicated and I don't really have a good system. But for Amazon, you can actually do that with um, a third party software called Inventory Lab. So it's really easy to like print out reports and stuff like that. But for eBay, it's a little challenging. So um, you can use an Excel spreadsheet and there's different th third party softwares, but that's a whole nother uh, long story right there. But just so you guys know, before you go write everything off at the end of the year, you gotta make sure that you write off only what has sold or else it's just gonna have to um, move forward for the next year. I forget how it works. I'm not a CPA, but anyways, what are you gonna do? Amazon has too many fees, you know? I mean, they're providing a service, guys. I mean, you've got billions and billions of people coming to their website, tons of traffic. You're able to sell things for premium prices. I mean, they're gonna get their cut. If you don't like it, if you don't like the fees, go start up your own e-commerce website. And I say that in the kindest way, and you'll find out really quick why they're charging what they're charging. Because in order to run an e-commerce site, there's a lot of work and a lot of money that goes into it. And they do a lot of things for us that we don't realize from email marketing to retargeting to following people all over the web, you know, tweaking their site for conversions. I mean, it's, it's insane if you actually think about all the things that Amazon does for us and eBay in order to get our items to sell. Try to build something that gets 2 billion views to your website per month and, and then come back to me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I agree, you know, fees, they definitely take out a good chunk of, of your profit and then you gotta pay taxes. I mean, it's crazy. We live in a crazy world, don't we? I mean, we make this money self-employed, you know, bring home 100K and you're like, holy crap, I brought home six figures and then, you know, Uncle Sam comes by and takes 30 to 40% of your money. So it's, you know, we live in a world where, uh, you know, everyone's trying to get their cut and you gotta be smart and that's why, you know, I started investing this year and I invested in my SEP IRA, SEP IRA to reduce my income to save on taxes. Uh, you know, that's why I invested in my Roth IRA to be able to compound my money over time and, and get it out tax free at the end. So you definitely got to be smart with your money because if you don't focus on growth and, you know, sheltering it and, you know, different things that you can do to protect yourself against taxes, I mean, your money's going to get eaten up. So I definitely feel you on that. You can check out The Green Room, Deborah, at greenroomuniversity.com. There's a tab that says join, and you can see the different options there. So yeah, if you guys are enjoying this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I put out daily videos um, during the week, and you know I talk about a lot of different topics. Pretty much just share my journey. I'm not a guru, I'm not an expert, um, but I definitely have a lot of knowledge, and I've been able to quit my job, and I have been working for myself for four years, just hustling, and you know I think I can add a lot of value to you guys. So definitely subscribe, definitely like the video. It helps out, and you know lets me know that I'm doing a good job and that I'm on track. And if you don't like it, you know, feel free to dislike the video. That's cool. Um, but, you know, give me some feedback in the comments afterwards. Um, you know, can't make everyone happy. That's one thing that I've learned over the years. You know, every time I try to make other people happy and try to cater to the 1%, you know, it screws me up. So I've kind of just, you know, done what I've done and, and I'm, I am who I am. I'm not perfect. But, uh, you know, I try to do my best to put out content and help you guys out however I can. So, um, yeah, with that being said... I'm gonna roll out of here. I gotta go to the library, get some work done, and uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks for the likes. What's up, Claire and Clutter? For clarity in the house, give her a subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll answer some more questions later, but I gotta run. Thanks for, every, for everything you guys do, and I'll catch you later. Bye.